Before I jump into the main topic, here is an important detail. If you are preparing for a tech role, then you must choose a solid career track. Visit sandfoundry.com slash training to know more. Um, dear friends, in this specific example, I am going to cover slightly more detail about ternary operator. You can see in this particular example, I am using a ternary operator and, and I am having multiple occurrences of the ternary operator. You can see you have one instance here, another instance here. Okay, So here we have a special situation where in an expression you will see that we have ternary operator and then we are using it at two times which means that we are also going to learn about some rules about operator precedence and then associativity right so in this particular example what you see here is we are having the same operator two times okay so we have to understand now the operator precedence is same because it's the same operator right now we have to think about the rules of associativity in this example so you should try to pause this video now and um, definitely analyze the code it is going to be slightly more complex okay so analyze the code and then you can run the code i am going to work on three different variations three different variations of the value a and b so that we can have a much more better understanding of how the expression gets evaluated right so what you see in the slide right now, we are having the value a equals to 1 and b equals to 1. So we will look into this condition, try to evaluate the entire expression and try to arrive at z, c and then d. Later, I am going to change these values so that you know we have some different variations for the answers, right? So these values of a equals to 1 and b equals to 1 has a good significance, okay? So let's uh, jump into the lab and uh, you can uh, definitely, you know, uh, look into the answers that you thought will be a correct answer. Some of you who don't want to immediately run it, I will give you all the three situations. Okay, the first situation is a equals to zero. Sorry, the first situation is a equal to one and then b equal to one, right? That's the first situation. So this is what you should get here. Suppose the value of a changes to zero so this is the second situation right so a equals to zero and b equals to one so you can try with that and analyze the code and then run the code the third situation what we will do is a is one but the value of b changes to zero right so here you will see some different outcomes right so i repeat we have a equals to one b equals to one that is situation one a equals to zero and b equals to one that is situation number two and a equals to 1 and b equals to 0, situation number 3, right? So let's try to uh, see, uh, you can also evaluate and then we'll run the code and I will explain in much more detail about the evaluation of this particular expression. So I'm jumping into the lab now. So here we have the code. You can see that a equals to 1 and b equals to 1 and then we are trying to run this code okay so let me run this code now uh, cc and a dot out okay so i am running it compilation is successful so what you get really is the value of z which is evaluated here it is basically 1 however there is absolutely no change for the values of C and D, you can see C is 3 and then the value of D is 4, right? So if you really got it right, then I think you really understand this uh, ternary operator, how to evaluate them. But some of you who still have doubts, right? So I'm going to explain it further. So let's look into the code now. Okay, so we'll have this code and let me go ahead and try to write the explanation portion for for you so the most important part here is evaluation of this expression right uh, as we already know that if the condition of this is true if a equals to b right then the answer will be generally this sum right 
if this is false then the answer is going to be generally uh, the other part after the colon right okay so some of you will have a doubt here because here what happens is we have we have one ternary operator sequence and then other ternary operator sequence here right so we have two ternary operators and then how are we going to evaluate them is it like you know um, left to right or right to left correct basically so generally when you read the operator precedence right we generally have to think in terms of uh, precedence and associativity these are two different things right so in one of the training videos uh, i am covering uh, operator precedence and associativity separately right there are two different topics in that okay so here the ternary operator is same is the same operator it is getting repeated two times so whenever you have a same operator level right so we have to think into uh, rules of associativity so the rules of associativity for the ternary operator is generally right to left okay so we are kind to create trying to create one association so if you really see this equation now this expression now actually okay we can easily uh, put some brackets so the best way for us to put a bracket here right so the way we are going to put a bracket here is because this has a higher you know uh, precedence is same so this has right to left right so we are going to put certain brackets around it so what we are doing is we are going to put a bracket like this okay so this is how it will be so just to make it more readable we are trying to compare things and uh, a equals to b right basically and then we are uh, having either a true or a false i'm giving some space so that you know, it is easy for you to read actually right okay and uh, let's remove this uh, for the sake of our understanding okay so i'm just trying to make sure that it becomes more readable for you there's nothing special about it at this point of time okay yeah so let's see this particular path right so the question is if even if you put a bracket like this okay and you can see that you have a pre increment right that is the most important thing like you see pre increment operator right okay so i am creating some ample space so that you know we have slightly better understanding of this right okay yeah so you can see pre increment we have put a bracket here putting a bracket generally does not mean that we are going to evaluate the innermost expression no we cannot do that just like that okay here we have to first go into a conditional settings right is a equals to b is the first question if you see is a equals to b yes one is equal to one right so both are one here if the condition is true then the left hand side of this colon right basically it will be evaluated so it, there is only one value here which is just a variable a so the value of a is 1 so what happens is 1 goes into the z so at this point of time what you are seeing here is essentially right z will be 1 because we are passing the value a to z right so if the condition is true we just go here and then assign this we are never going to even evaluate this because that is of no uh, that is of no use right because the condition is true so we are going to follow this rule so even though you have a pre-increment here it is uh, does not matter right so if you are never going to evaluate it as per our printf what you see is the value of z is original value 3 sorry the value of c is original value 3 and then the value of d is the original value 4 right and then the z has become 1 so 1 3 and 4 right this is the answer if you just compile once again you will see that it is 1 3 and 4 right so this is the first such example right so let's move on to the next one next one i am going to do one more variation okay so let's do one more variation now So I am going to copy uh, the program p21.c p21 underscore 2.c okay so it's one of the variation now let's go ahead and modify the code so the first modification is a equals to 
0 right so let's think about this situation where a equals to 0 okay if the value of a is 0 and b is 1 then this condition is false if this condition is false we are going into this area remember that if the condition is false we are going to, to go into this area right okay now the value of b as you know is already 1 so what we are seeing, seeing here is this is false we jump into this area this is a condition so we substitute the value of b equals to 1 so b equals to 1 is a true case is a correct true right it's a non-zero value it is true so if it is true then this portion is going to be evaluated and this won't be evaluated at all only this will be evaluated right so what happens now is it is plus plus c so c becomes 4 right c becomes 4 and then since this condition is true the value of z will become 4 why 4 because this is a pre-increment right so what you see is z will be 4 why 4 because it was a pre-increment operator if it is a pre-increment then it is going to be 3 becomes 4 c c is also as you know c also is also 4 because it got incremented we are not going to evaluate this because this was true so this gets evaluated this will be as it is so d is the same as 4 now right so d was 4 so let's try to see whether our understanding is correct or not you know by running this code right so we will see this let's run this code now we have compiled it we are running yes so what you see here is you see all three of them 4 right so I think the summary of this particular exercise what you see here is you know we have to be really careful about putting a bracket so the bracket is this this is very important after that based on the input values I repeat based on the input values expressions right so we have expression here basically based on the values you are going to evaluate it based on the conditions okay you are now never going to just look into this in isolation that is the key never look into isolation okay see you must see that you must check that where they belong to in that expression are they part of the initial sequence on the condition check or the true or the false and then if it is a nested one level down actually correct okay then you have to see how you are going to put a bracket and how you are going to evaluate it right okay so so far so good so let's look into one more variation now okay so we'll do a 21.c p21 underscore 3.c okay so we will open this file 3.c right so what i will do is in the previous case we had a equals to 0 right now i will make it b equals to 0 so i repeat we are making b equals to 0 right so here b equals to 0 now since b has become 0 we have to try to evaluate this expression right so let's start with once again yeah so let's start with the understanding a equals to b this condition is false because 1 is not 0 so we go into the false case which means that this is not going to be the answer for z no we are going to evaluate this and then we are going to somehow substitute the value back here right okay since the value of b equals to 0 so we substitute the value b here so 0 right so it's saying it's a if condition 0 right basically or a conditional 0 question mark so it's a false this is false false means this will not be touched at all only this will be touched right so we have to do d plus plus but this is basically a um, post increment operator right so we substitute first so the value of d equals to 4 was substitute it gets substituted first so z so z becomes 4 right so you say z will become will be 4 uh, and then d is incremented to 
5 now right basically so d is now 5 right what happens to our c when you are going to print c even though it is a pre-increment operator this will not be impacted at all because our logic did not allow us to jump to this particular portion of the code right so c will be as it is so c will be 3 it was original value 3 right okay so what you see here is c will be the same as 3 the original value okay so what we are seeing here is z should be 4 c will be 3 and then d will be 5 right so 4 3 5 is what we are looking at in this particular explanation let me compile this code and let me clear it up okay yeah so we'll do a compilation and then a run so we are looking at exactly 4 3 5 right so and i think that is what we did actually what you can see here is z will be 4 c will be 3 and d is 5 so 4 3 5 4 3 5 right so as a summary now finally right so what we have learned in this exercise is that you know how to look into the ternary operator and then if there are nested ternary operators one after another we have to think about the rules of associativity and the evaluation of ternary operators are solely dependent on the outcome of the inputs or outcome of the uh, conditions we call it like an if condition you can see here right outcome of the conditions uh, and then i gave you three variations for this i hope you enjoyed this video uh, do like the video if you you know are really uh, happy with this particular code thank you very much and uh, i will uh, see you in other video